folks, my name is Shaw with Royal Tiger Imports, and today I'm here to show you all a beautiful new batch of Swiss rifles and carbines that we just received. These rifles and carbines I have in front of me, we just recently received directly from Switzerland, and there's no better way to put it, these things are in beautiful shape. Uh, most of these are going to be in very good to excellent condition, if not most of them being excellent, and a very select few being in almost like new condition. Uh, the Swiss are, of course, avid shooters, and there's uh, many requirements for you know being a consistent shooter. But nonetheless, these did not receive nearly the amount of use that they did in such other countries like Ethiopia. Uh, it's no secret that many people are not a fan of the condition of some of the Ethiopian firearms. These are quite the opposite. Uh, it's, of course, no secret either that Switzerland never got in any wars. So if you never have to use your rifle in a war, then it doesn't get the wartime use that it you know, normally would with uh, some of the German Mausers and other similar guns in Ethiopia having been owned and used by multiple different countries in multiple different wars. But these are quite the opposite. Moving on, however, uh, of course, these are chambered in the 75 by 55 Swiss cartridge, a nice flat shooting, powerful cartridge. Uh, very similar to 7.62 NATO with a little bit of case different dimension differences. Uh, in addition to the rifles, of course, we have a few other accessories such as the slings and the front sight covers, which I'll show you in just a few moments. But we'll briefly run over some of the models that we have in front of me. Uh, the closest one right here is a Schmidt Rubin 1889 straight pull rifle. It's a good time to mention that every single one of these rifles is a straight pull rifle. Followed by that, we have the 1896-11. Uh, many of these were, of course, 1896, and then implying that it was updated to a 1911 specification. Then following that, we have a 1911 rifle, and then we also have a K-11 carbine. K, of course, standing for carbine. And then we have, finally, a K-31. Uh, the K-31 is a little bit different than the rest of these due to a slightly shorter action, as well as a few other small differences, which I'll show you in just a few moments. But without further ado, let's get a closer look. All right, folks, let's get a closer look at these rifles and carbines. Starting with the oldest of the batch first, you can see this is a Schmidt Rubin 1889. This is the earliest of the straight pull rifles. And you can see that this particular one is just in beautiful condition. It has, of course, the signature Swiss beer keg charging handle, as many refer to it as. And it has the signature Schmidt Rubin extended magazine at the bottom. You can also see that this lever is there, which is a magazine disconnect, which physically lowers the magazine body entirely away from the rest of the receiver. You can also see up close, just above the lever, there is a small cover that is pinned in place, or at least slipped over, to prevent the magazine cutoff from being engaged. So this one is currently an only magazine feeding spec. Moving on, you can also see the slightly different rear sight. This is a much taller rear sight than the other models. And of course, it has the sight graduations on the left tower of the rear sight. And again, to touch on the condition, even though this Schmidt Rubin is an antique, this thing is built pre-1898. These are all ending in about 1897 production. These are just in beautiful shape for their age. Let's move on to the 1896-11. You can see that this one has a professional wood repair where this was modified from a straight sock to have a semi-pistol grip. It's a good time to point out as well, we have our new import mark with a laser engraver which is much smaller and crisper. It is not like the old pin stamp. You can also see with the 9611s as well as the 11s that they use the shorter magazine, which is much slimmer to the rifle itself. As well as our rear sight, you can see that this is much more similar to a flat Mauser sight or any sort of tangent sight. And again, finish on these is just incredible. They have nice clear stampings and you'll notice that many of the parts on these particular rifles are of course stamped with a Swiss cross. 
Another thing to point out too is that we also have muzzle covers available for these rifles. We have the rifle style muzzle cover and we also have the carbine style muzzle cover which I'll show in just a few moments. And speaking of these Swiss stamps, you can also see right there a nice crisp cross and a shield Swiss mark. Moving on, we have our G11. Again, the signature beer keg charging handle with nice crisp bluing. Have our flat rear sight, of course. And you'll also notice that some of the upper handguards have a brass rear attachment while others have a steel rear attachment. And again, moving on, you can see the exact same muzzle cover. The rifle ones in particular have the smaller hook with the full round, almost an oval shape that encapsulates the entire front end of the gun. As you can see, we'll give this one a shot real quick. And this one slips just over the muzzle like such. And moving on, it's a good time to touch on the slings as well as the carbine muzzle covers. You can see that this is one of the K31 slings with the nice metal buckle. And this is made of really high quality, thick Swiss leather. And many of them, even though it may be a little hard to see, do have original manufacturer markings, as well as again, many of them have the Swiss cross. Moving on to the muzzle covers themselves, you can also see that they differ slightly for the carbine. And we also have some that are brass and some that appear to be made out of aluminum or a similar alloy. Moving on, we have our G11, or this is the K11 carbine rather. Of course, you can see our nice crisp import mark, which is much improved from before. This one has just a little bit more wear than the rest, but nonetheless, the vast majority of the bluing is remaining. We have our slightly different K11 rear sight. And again, I may sound like a broken record, but the condition on these is quite nice. Of course, we have our nice crisp marking on that one as well. And this last one is our K31. And it's a good time to touch on some of the small differences. You can see that the K11 has a slightly shorter action compared to the, the K11 here. So the K31 rather has just a slightly shorter action than this K11 carbine. The handling though is quite similar between the two. Most of all of these straight pull rifles have very similar handling. You can see the, what is colloquially called the key ring. The striker has this large key ring at the back, which can be used to cock the firing pin. So you can see if you pull it straight back, it engages the firing pin and the handling is quite similar. And as I mentioned previously, some of the Swiss are avid shooters. So you can see some of these carbines and rifles even have the shooting competition and weapon identification stickers just applied straight to the rifle. Thank you very much for watching. God bless.